So I want to just go through this and we're going to start to get to the case. Okay, ma'am. Okay, man fatally shot by Dalton officers. Okay, we're gonna get to the case now. But before we do that, we're gonna read this article because it's gonna kind of highlight in 2023 three three things, three or four cases that happen, and they're showing it's a problem in Dalton. It is a problem. Outside probe underway in federal uh, fatal shooting by police. So this is altercation with Dalton, Illinois police lead Gary resident unalive. Oh, I hate the, this the way this look. I was trying to scroll down. Okay, so Illinois, you guys you can see this is a little different. I don't know why they set this up like this. It sucks. Okay, Illinois State Police said Monday they are investigating the shooting death of a man from Gary, alleged by police officers outside of Dalton, a Dalton home. Illinois home. The shooting took place earlier April 21st outside a home in the 600 block of East 144 place, according to the state. Dalton police responded to the call at the home and found man with a gun who refused an officer order to drop the firearm. According to the police, it was not immediately clear if the man had threatened the officer with a gun, because I think that was the one that was sleeping in the car. The man was shot the man was unalive with was identified by the Cook County Medical Examiner on office as Timothy McDonald, McDonald, McDaniel. So Timothy McDaniel. This is not the one we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about someone else, but we're going to talk about uh, I think Timothy Mc. Hold on, let me just make sure. Hold on. Yeah, no, we're going to be talking about Timothy McDaniel today. That's what we're talking about because there's another one. It's so many, y'all. So we're going to be talking about that is the kill shot. Okay, this is the kill shot case. Timothy McDaniel, okay? Now, he was pronounced unalive shortly at 6 a.m. April 21st um, at the hospital. His unalive was ruled a homicide, according to the medical examiner. Now, we do know that the officers did this. State police said that they were notified at 6 a.m. April 21st by Dalton Police to investigate an officer-involved shooting. The um, state police said members of its po police integrity task force, and that's one of the people who you need to know that these are the people who are supposed to govern over Dalton police. They're, they're, they're like internal affairs. That's what we call internal affairs in Jersey, okay? The ones that's over the police. So this entity is called Public Integ Integrity Task Force, and I'm going to put the information in our community page. Yep, I'm telling. Re um, responded, but the department de uh, declined additional comments on the investigation. News of officers involved shootings come as news conference was scheduled for Wednesday outside the Dalton police station regarding another shooting death involving Dalton police. The family of 19-year-old Alexis Wilson has a lawsuit pending in connection with the Homewood woman's unaliving. She was fatally unalive by the Dalton officer July 27, 2021. You see how so much stuff is going on around the same time? The same time. During an altercation at the restaurant, we know we talked about that in detail. The drive through at the 600 block of Shelby. A lot be going on around Shelby, huh? Jesus Christ. Um, according to the authority, the family filed a civil rights lawsuit that accused Dalton police of causing Wilson's unalive through the use of assessors force without justification. The Wednesday news conference also was regarding the unalive this is another case we're going to get into. I'm sorry. I had to say this because it made me mad. They, you give me too much to make videos on. And I'm going to make sure that the public knows what's going on, Delta Police. Don't be mad at me. You better fight for the people because your family is out here being subjected to this shit. And you never know. So this is another case that we're going to be bringing up soon. The Wednesday news conference also regarding the, the unalive of a 29-year-old Darius Wilson. She's not related to Alexis Wilson, this gentleman, who was unalive while in custody of Dalton police in October. Is that cell block three? 
This is cell block three. Please, if anyone in Dalton have any more information related to cell block three and you would like to come and talk about it, give me some information, give me some cases to look up when I put his up, because I do have some more background information about the numbers of death that has been taking place in Chicago, in, in, in state prisons, in county jails, I, all of that. You know, I got the data. But I just need some names so I can start showing you the trends. So this gentleman was 29 years old and was found unalive in custody of the Dalton police station. Separate from the Dalton unalive, I mean shooting, I'm trying to change the words, the medical examiner offic officials office has reported that a homicide of an 18-year-old Devin Barkdale of a 700 block radius uh 144th street in Dalton. He suffered multiple gunshot wounds and was pronounced unalive on 4 4 April 22nd. Now, did they say the cops did that? I gotta look that up. Okay. His death was ruled a homicide, but police did not provide additional information. So obviously that had to do something with the police too. So I'm going to be showing some of these cases that we mentioned to you here in addition to what we're gonna show you tonight of the kill shot, okay? So please hit the like button. Um, we're gonna to start to get into the articles and the, the topic of the night, the last part, where we're gonna get into the case of um, Hall versus Dalton. And that's Hall, they're in representation from Timothy McDonald Hall. Okay, so that's his last name. And what we're going to do is going to let the reader read it because I've been on for a while. Y'all know I'm going to be watching it with you guys in the comment. But that's what we're going to do because when I separate it, it's going to be going to sound better. And we're going to get it and we're going to, I'm going to stop and I'm going to talk. Okay. All right. So let's get to it. If this is not showing that something is severely wrong in Dalton, I don't know what can show you. This is not to downgrade the police, but it is to say you got a fucking problem. And that not only incompetence, corruption, pettiness, nonsense, you are costing Dalton residents millions of dollars. The way it sound right now, it sounds like about billions. It's going to get into the billions the way y'all doing shit. Dalton police shoots an unalive man in backyard of home. So um, this is the video where we're going to get into the case. He knew it was a deadly police shooting in South Suburban Dalton. CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey forced out. Now, I, I was kind of confused because the way they tell the story, they don't tell the person name and then they try to switch it up a little bit. So I'm just giving y'all a heads up. I know this is the same case from my, it took me a few, few hours. I was like, damn, won't they say the name? It's so many going on, but y'all going to see how it slightly changed. Because they say an armed man, and now this is Dalton police shoot kills man in backyard of home. This is how it first starts, okay? Breaking news, a deadly police shooting in South Suburban Dalton. CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey for us outside the scene where it happened with new details. Megan. Right, Dalton police said it happened sometime between 5 and 5.30 this morning and talking to neighbors, that's about the time that they say they heard gunshots. Take a look behind me. This is where they believe that the shooting happened. You can see the tire tracks uh, from a vehicle back here. There are, is an evidence marker and some blood in the grass. Now, police tell us that a call from a woman came in about an unwanted subject. Again, we're at 144th place in Dalton. Police were not sure about the relationship between the caller and the subject, but upon arrival, they encountered this person. He was in his car and they determined he had a weapon as he was sitting in the car. They say they made several attempts to get him to put it down, to surrender that weapon. He did not, and the officers shot and killed the suspect. The weapon was recovered on the scene. It's important to note there was an order of protection in place against the subject by the caller. The subject is about is late 30s, early 40s, according to police. And moments ago, we spoke to rattled neighbors here on the scene. So I heard the gunshots. I immediately got on the floor because you don't know, you know, you know where 
gunfire was actually coming from. It sounded from it, but it could be anywhere. So uh alerted my mom, and she's like, yeah, I'm hearing this gunfire. What's going on? And I said, Some, someone shoots. So I called the police. All right, so now we're going to listen to another version because you're going to see how shit escalate. It just changed. I'm like, okay, which one was it? Which one was it? This is April 21st, the same day, 2023. So it's like whole, and this is the same thing they did with the Alexis Wilson case. You just change and mutate different shit. Be consistent. Report the facts. So I don't trust nobody. Greg's like, no, I don't trust you. I don't. Let me go stop. <laughs> a man dying in a confrontation. There are many questions in Dalton today about what led up to a man dying in a confrontation with police. It happened just before six this morning near 144th place. But police have offered so far very few initial details. So NBC 5's Karen Aguilar is live in Dalton today with what she's learned from police so far today. Karen. Dalton police said that officers ordered a man to drop his weapon several times and he refused leading to the shooting i just heard was i i heard some commands that the officers i guess had given they heard somebody say like get out of the car uh hands up or something then it was just a bunch of shots that rang off chloe simmons says she woke up to gunshots early friday morning Illinois State Police says someone was shot by a police officer around six. Officer said it was an ex-boyfriend. I believe that got shot. Neighbors tell me they believe the shooting happened right here, a few houses down from where Chloe lives, near 144th Place and Dr. MLK Drive in Dalton. Tire marks are seen on the ground, starting from here and going into a nearby alley. My own backyard is like, what's going on? You know, like that's that's not good. Medical examiner's office confirms they were killed. The person who died has not been identified yet. They just told us that someone was injured, uh, was taken to the hospital. But uh, it was basically, uh, they were in the alley area investigating and in, in the front here. The Illinois State Police is investigating the circumstances surrounding this incident. Now, you see how we get a little more spin on it. The first one didn't mention that he had a gun. And now this one mentions that he has a gun. And then we're going to get to... Is it another one? One more. Um, I think they said several times. Okay. Hold on one second. I don't want to play the same one with the girl. Okay, no, but this is a little bit different, y'all. It does have that same girl in the interview, but we're going to listen because you know how they be taking people interview and they just split it up. Let's listen. This is a little sh it's short. on the side of my judy because this is a police involved shooting it is up to the illinois state police to determine whether dalton's officers acted appropriately but while the investigation itself is in the hands of a third party detectives here were able to provide us with some information about what led up to the shooting it was an early morning call for help that police say ended with a man dead inside his car in an alley in south suburban dalton residents woken up by the shouting and gunshots the commands were so loud, like they literally sound like it was in my backyard. And that's what got me up. I'm like, who was in my backyard? And so when I kind of got up out of the bed and sat on the side of my bed. I just got to stop and ask something. Bullshit. Okay. This is what I know these cops do. Okay. They grab you. Get your hands off my gun. Get your hands. Stop resisting the rest. And you be like, wait, what the fuck? I'm not, I'm not doing nothing. So I don't want to hear that bullshit. This is part of their MO. And you be like, I'm not resisting. Get, get down on the ground. Fucking bullshit. I'm sorry. It makes me mad. It does. Let's finish listening. It, and then that's when I heard the gunfire go off. I was told by an officer that they got a call for a domestic a few times on the night um, from the neighbor. And when they arrived on scene, the man had a gun. The dead man say police was the ex-boyfriend of a woman who lives inside this home and that she had a restraining order against him. Investigators telling ABC7 when the first officer arrived on the scene, they approached him inside his car and saw he had a gun. They opened fire only after officers repeated calls to drop the weapon went unheeded. Well, I heard the gunshots. I immediately got on the floor because you don't know, you know, you know, where gunfire is actually come from. The shooting hitting a bit too close to home for some of those who live here. I don't know them. I don't know them very well. I just know my 
son does sometimes come outside and play with the kids um, that live there. All right, I'm going to start right here, too, because I'm not going to be biased about any particular situation. Um, we're going to get into the case. But what I will say is that there is two sides to this story, because in domestic situations, and it's so crazy because I watched this video of this Spanish lady who was being basically just stalked by her kid's father, being abused, being threatened. She made over 35 police reports. And because she he couldn't be served, it was never active. The day that he finally got served, he came and killed her right in front of her kids. So I'm going to be honest. This is a touchy story as far as the circumstances, because we don't know what was his intent, especially if he if it was allegedly several calls. We're going to see if in the case it highlights the incident that brought them there, how many calls or whatever. And we're going to follow up to see what's going on with this case. But it, it is really a hard position to be in, I would assume, as the person who actually called. Um, but I don't know, because if I was fearing for my life, for real, for real, and my ex was outside with a gun in my driveway, all, all cars are down. So I'm just being honest, because you got to, it's two sides to the story. But... In this particular incident, the issue was when they gave him alleged a lawful command to put the gun down, what did he do? Was he resistant? Was he even coherent? Was he just passed the fuck out in a car? You see what I'm saying? And these are some of the things where we have to question. So I'm not saying that the gentleman was in the right situation being there at that young lady's house and she didn't want him there. And with a gun, in Illinois is not an open carry. It is true, but there are certain things cops are supposed to do. So what I'm going to do while I'm getting this um, up into our favorite narrator, I'm going to just, again, give you an example. I can't kick patients' ass. I can't just poke their ass with a needle. I if, I if they're acting crazy, they're swinging on us. I have to go through protocols. I have to call a doctor, have to find a safe way to restrain them and protect myself, but not cause harm on them. And this is what the police is supposed to do in the same capacity. So I don't appreciate none of this shit. If I got to fucking behave, you got to behave. This sucker, this motherfucker right here, excuse my language, this motherfucker right here need to behave. All these right here, huh? And them. Period. You're in the capacity of being the leader, a public servant. Y'all disgust me. Now let's get it. Let's get it. We're gonna listen to this. Who's gonna take the sh the kill shot? Let's get it on the screen. I'm gonna take myself off now. If it's something significant, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop and probably skip some stuff, but I'm going to explain to y'all. Now that we listen to the Alexis Wilson case, this is going to help us understand this case a little bit better too. And it's going to be easier to comprehend because there's a lot of the same um, filings, the same type of actions they're taking against the police that was in the Alexis Wilson case, i.e., let me give you an example. Um, just kind of strolling down here. Count one, wrongful death act, excessive force, okay? Count just a 12 page document, so it's not that long. Count two, uh, survivalist excessive force. Okay, count three, um, wrongful death act battery, survival act battery. Remember that survival act has to do with something in the capacity that the person was alive. Wrongful death act responded superior. So we're going to let this play what else. So we got survival act responded superior. So we're going to get that there. They, they a little bit different, but pretty much kind of in alignment. And we're going to let his story be plugged in. Now, what, what troubles my brothers, my brother, what troubles me, honestly, this is filed February 2nd, 2024. But what really troubles me is the number of police that are involved in this shit. Okay, so this is a complaint. Maybe I'm going to read it. Let me see. 
Okay, now now comes the plaintiff, um, Destiny Hall, independent administrator of the estate of Timothy McDaniel Hall. This is the deceased. Okay, so let me see. This is jurisdiction, um, and these are the parties. So the parties in the jurisdiction, and then we'll get to the facts. The parties is, we have Miss Hall that's going to be on the behalf of her family member. Dalton Police Department, including Officer Towns, Gitz, Herrera, these are officers, Johnson, Reed, Mathis, Officer L. Lacey, Officer M. Staples. Staples. Don't that sound familiar? Anybody who's been following other um don't that don't tell I don't know where Officer Staples come from. Did he have something to do with the um Fania case? Was that the one that she called? I don't know why I'm getting this like the name sounds so familiar. Is that the one? Y'all can y'all tell me if that's the same officer because I forgot the officer name because Judge Dye kept saying giving him stuff, you know, for his commendable behavior. Is that the one? Okay. And then there were also unknown officers involved. Allegedly, possibly Officer Perez. That's going to be some of the officers. These officers right here, what we're going to do after this case is that we're going to find any case involving these officers. And we're going to bring it to your attention because we're going to show you a pattern after you hear what happened here. It's a pattern of death, a pattern of kill, a pattern of control, a pattern of corruption. That's what I'm seeing, and it's disgusting, all right? So we got about seven officers. Are they still working there? Huh? Let's get it. Let's let the, let, let me see if I got the right reading voice on today. Let me see. Let me let the, let me see. At all times relevant herein, including on April 21st, 2023. Defendant Police Officers Townsend, Gist, Herrera, Johnson, Reed, Mathis, Lacey, Staples and unknown police officers were employed by Defendant Village of Dolden and acting within the scope of their duties as police officers. Facts 15. On April 21, 2023, at approximately 5.16 a.m., comma, Defendant Village of Dalton through its police department dispatched units to the home of Lakisha Brooks in response to a call that the father of her child was at the back of her residence. 16. Defendant responding officers canvassed the home of Lakisha Brooks and other Defendant Dalton Police Department units canvassed the rear of her residence. 17. Defendant police officers observed an unknown male sleeping in a Greer Lincoln vehicle in the rear of the residence. 18. The unknown male in the Greer Lincoln vehicle was plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall, deceased. 19. Defendant responding officers went to the back of the house to meet with the other defendant Dalton Police Department units and observe the vehicle with its engine running and with its headlights off. 20. Defendant Dalton Police Department units disabled the vehicle prior to making contact with Timothy McDaniel Hall. Let's highlight two things before we get to the next page. One, he was sleeping. Two, they disabled the vehicle. Don't know what that means, but we have two points of weakness for the officers. 21. After the car was immobilized, a discussion amongst defendants' defendant police officers occurred as to who was going to shoot and take the kill shot of Timothy McDaniel Hall. Let's stop. Can we play that one more time? Let's play it one more time. 21. After the car was immobilized, a discussion amongst defendants' defendant police officers occurred as to who was going to shoot and take the kill shot of Timothy McDaniel Hall. 22. Defendant responding officers shot through the rear driver's side passenger window striking Timothy McDaniel Hall once through the back of the head and several times throughout his body killing. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit I'm I'm a little bit taken back. Can I just I'm, should I just let y'all listen to this real quick before I react because I'm a little bit taken back. Let me let y'all listen to this one more time and then I'm going to react. 21. After the car was immobilized, a discussion amongst defendants' defendant police officers occurred as to who was going to shoot and take the kill shot of Timothy McDaniel Hall. 22. 
Defendant responding officers shot through the rear driver's side passenger window striking Timothy McDaniel Hall once through the back of the head and several times throughout his body killing H.M. 23. At the time defendant officers shot and killed Timothy McDaniel Hall, he posed no imminent threat of great bodily harm nor death to such officers. Mm. Count I, wrongful death act, excessive force. Okay, so I just want y'all to picture this. Now we get more on the scene, more behind the scenes of what happened. We see, they said he was asleep. They disarmed the car. They were yelling. This man could have been passed out, incapacitated, drunk, fucked up. We don't know what it was. But they wasn't, they didn't even seem close enough to me to interact and for him to hear if you take a shot from the back passenger window. Why? In the back of the head and several times through his body. What was the reason? Now let's get into count one. Excessive wrongful death act, excessive force. Count by wrongful death act, excessive force at all times relevant. It was the duty of the defendants J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis, L. A. C. M. Staples, and Yukon police officers. Oh, and let me highlight: they did not say who was the officer who took the kill shot. They didn't highlight who was the officer. I would say, at least in the Alexis Wilson case, that they were able to highlight who did the shooting in the car. At least they didn't try to cover that shit up. To refrain from conduct exhibiting reckless or conscious disregard for the safety of others, including plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall. 26. Notwithstanding said duty, defendants J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis, L.A.C., M. Staples and Yukon police officers committed one or more of the following willful and wanton acts and or omissions. Uh. Used excessive force against plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall under circumstances in which plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall presented no threat of force to the police officers or any other individual. B. Recklessly or intentionally used force against plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall knowing that it would cause plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall bodily injury and or death. C. Discharged a firearm at decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall under circumstances in which Timothy McDaniel Hall presented no threat of death or serious bodily harm to police officers or other individuals. D. Recklessly or intentionally discharged a firearm at decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall knowing that it would cause Timothy McDaniel Hall's death or serious bodily injury. 27. As a direct, as a direct result of the death of plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall, his next of kin have suffered great losses of a personal and pecuniary nature including grief and sorrow and loss of companionship and society, subjecting defendants J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis, L.A.C., M. Staples, and Count Two Survival Act Excessive Force. At all times relevant, it was the duty of the defendants J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis, L.A.C., M. Staples, and Yukon police officers to refrain from conduct exhibiting reckless or conscious disregard for the safety of others, including plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall. 31. Notwithstanding said duty, uh, used excessive force against plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall under circumstances in which plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall presented no threat of force to the police officers or any other individual. B. Recklessly or intentionally used force against plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall knowing that it would cause plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall bodily injury and or death. C discharged a firearm at decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall under circumstances in which Timothy McDaniel Hall presented no threat of death or serious bodily harm to police officers or other individuals. D. Recklessly or intentionally discharged a firearm at decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall knowing that it would cause Timothy McDaniel Hall's death or serious bodily injury. Count 3. Wrongful Death Act. Battery. 34. Plaintiff realleges as a direct result of the death of plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall, his next of kin have suffered great losses of a personal and pecuniary nature including grief and sorrow and loss of companionship and society, 
subjecting defendants J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis, L.A.C., M. Staples, and you known police, police officer. The reason why I keep letting their name play over and over because y'all need to remember these officers' name because if y'all ass come encounter with them, you're gonna be like, oh shit. Yeah, you better pray the blood of Jesus. Okay. So they have battery, they have wrongful death and battery. That is three. We we're down, we're at three now. Two is survivalist act, that's excessive force, as well as the number one is wrongful death. Now let's go down a little bit more and let's get into four. I think it's only five, okay? Survival Act and Battery. Let me see if it's something a little bit different. You know, a lot of this sometimes be repetitive, but then they use uh, just one different reason why um, an excessive judicial requirements for assignment. Okay, so this is... Count for Survival Act Battery 38. Wherefore, plaintiff destiny howl praise for judgment against defendants J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis, L.A.C., M. Staples and Yuknon Police Officer, decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall suffered serious injuries of a personal and pecuniary nature, including but not limited to great pain and suffering prior to his death, subjecting defendants J. Townsend, T. J. Because we want to highlight... I think, well, hold on, let's just go back one second because they said that they arrived at this person's house at what time? Was it four in the morning? And at six o'clock, that's when they call. I just want to make sure because if you telling me, oh, at 5.16. So from 5.16 a.m. to six o'clock when they pronounced them dead, it was 45 minutes of this happening. And you know, this took place in a split second. So there may have been some time for them to try to revive his body after they set up there and just shot him up. I'm just being honest. Let's get down to the fourth one. I just wanted to clarify what was the amount of time from when they said they called the investigators to start investigating at 6 a.m. and when they arrived. Okay, so the Survival Act battery. Let me see if there's anything else here. Uh, wrongful Death Act. Count V. Wrongful Death Act. Respondent Superior 40. Plaintiff 3 alleges, repletes and incorporates by reference paragraphs 1-39 of this. Committed forcibly cause unwanted and unconsented harmful and or offensive contact with plaintiff's decedent Timothy McDaniel Hall person in the defendant village of Dalton by and through its employees and agents. J. Townsend, T. Gist, E. Herrera, D. Johnson, W. Reed, H. Mathis. So this count right here is basically wrongful death is setting up um, for the plaintiff's family to receive some, you see what I'm saying? Receive some type of ju judgment. So his next of kin has suffered great loss, personal um, nature, including grief and sorrow, loss, complaints. So it's setting up what was the loss behind this. And then they have to talk about, you know, looking for monetary gain at the end. So wherefore plaintiff Denise Hall paid praise for the judge against the defendant village and the village of Dalton in excess of minimal ju ju uh, jurisdictional requirements for assignments of this case of the law division plus cause. So he didn't, did he quote a case here? No, he just said whatever the law minimal jurisdiction required for this assigned case they, these lawyers are lazy. Damn, you couldn't even quote a fucking law here. Anyway, that's him saying that we need to get some monetary funds. Okay, so let's see what the Survival Act has to say. If it's anything different, um, we this is pretty much the synopsis of this particular situation. They're going after pretty much almost the same things that um is going on in Miss Alexis Wilson case. Okay, and it is so sad that the village of Dalton has to suffer the incompetence and in this case, the murderous behaviors of the officers. I'm glad that this wasn't really a long read, but I want you guys to get an intel look. Now we, again, you saw the reports, how they advanced. First man was shot in the back of the house, girlfriend called, oh, then the man had a gun, oh, he wouldn't listen to the officers. And now we get into the case and he was asleep. He was possibly passed out. They wasn't even close enough to me 
to make him listen to a lawful response. I don't give a damn. And if he didn't move or didn't do anything, because they're not saying this here. So we're going to go into a little bit more and see when it gets to the outcome of this case. We're going to track it and see what else they add. What are their responses? in the next couple of weeks and let you know what the officers actually say hold on one second let me look at me about to just go nope i'm not doing that tonight i was just about to go on pacer like let me just go on pacer for you guys right now and get a case update but i wanted to introduce you to this case again we're getting to the two hour point and i don't never want my broadcast to go over two hours unless it really have to so what we're going to do is when we get into the next case, which is the gentleman who was 29 years old, who was found unalive in the in the jail, in Dalton jail. And then we're going to get back to all of these seven officers and we're going to see if they have any other outstanding cases with their name, especially Officer Perez, because he was not named in this one. He is a gangster superstar. If y'all go watch this movie, Copland, Officer Perez belong in this motherfucker. This is the most crookedest video movie. This from the 80s that I ever saw. Police get down. And this was my uncle's favorite movie. I said, what the? What? And it made me think. And I'm just being honest. So there's a lot of corruption going on in Dalton. My main concern is the residents. Me being an online resident, you never know. I'll be traveling. You'll be out there. I'll be your nurse one day. Police come in like, is that you? Grace, that's you? Yeah, I got the needle. Let me stop. <laughs> come out there, be out there messing with y'all. But what I want y'all to understand that is something seriously going on in Dalton outside of the financial issues. People's lives are in danger. They have used this police academy, her stinking ass, have used incompetent police to harass, bully, unlawfully shut down business. We talk about Paolo, Pavos, Lacey, all of those places, even the gaming place. We've talked about all of those, and they use the cops that are using your tax dollars against you. So that's why you need to know the proper channels of reporting. And I know it may not seem like nothing getting done, but if it's only one or two of you or two of us, you're going to be overlooked. But if it's a flood of us motherfuckers calling in like the day that Jedediah got locked up, they was like, what we got to do? They fucking calling. We don't know. When there's a flood of us calling in or not even calling in, writing letters, emailing, talking about cases, and it's going to these proper channels, i.e. the Public Integrity, Integrity, Integrity Task Force. That is y'all internal affairs over the police out there in um, Illinois. This is who y'all reported to. So y'all need to know that entity and then start to ask them questions. What are they supposed to do when this happened? What is the law? What da, da, da. So when you go, you can present this to them or you can actually act in, in cohortness with your law, meaning that you stand your fucking ground. Excuse my language. Know the Constitution. Know how to behave. Don't give them a reason to do things. And you're going to teach them the law because this shit right here is dangerous. This is what I'm saying. I, it's too many cases for me to have to do. It's a lot. It don't make no damn sense for a little ass town like that. So I'm going to conclude. I want to say thank you guys for being here with Grace Levi today. We're going to break this up in sections so we can piece have two or three throughout the week. So y'all can rewatch this. I know everybody didn't want to hear everything. And then I also have two more video release of one of the trustees greatest, um, greatest clips. Okay. So again, I want to put this on the screen. Shout out to Alexis Wilson and Miss Wilson. She is having a butterfly release. It's free, 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 free. It's all to show love and support for Miss Wilson. It is hard to lose a family member, let alone a child. The people I showed you were grown ass people and it was hurtful for their family. And they're still seeking justice. There are plenty of them. So you guys band together. If you can, show her some love. Like I said, go on her page. Hit her up. Say, girl, we got your back. Because this is one of the youngest that Dalton has taken away. And it's unacceptable. 
nobody's perfect, but it does not mean you deserve to die. Just because my patients want to kick my black ass and tell me about myself. Oh, you black bitch. Da, 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 da. You think that what I'm about to do? You think I'm about there to go kill them? Mm? Let them die? No. Shit. If I can't do it and I got to get abused, y'all fucking police need to get abused too. We are public servants. So with that goes to say, we're going to end this live with some music. You guys already know I'm going to show you some Hebrew clips. I love you guys. Please support our sponsors. Okay? I'm going to see you this week, dog. When we remember Zion, we hanged our heart upon the willows in the midst they hold. The dead, they that carried us away captives, required us a son. And they that wasted us, required us more. Zion, sing us one of those songs of Zion. This ain't about Corona, this ain't about Corona. The tribe just waking, we own it. Coming back to the father, prodigal son. His arms is open, you bonus. Uh, Babylon fall when you honor your mother. Babylon fall when you love your brother. Babylon fall when you keep commandments. We took an oath to take care of each other. Babylon fall when you put down the idols. We yes. find out really your rival. Babylon fall when you pick up a Bible. We made an oath about our survival. They call us niggas and thugs, but we don't put down the drawers. Showing our people some love. You can get stepped like a roar. All the God is coming straight from the mud. Just wait on the day of the Lord. Messiah come back with a sword. Dragging the meat is around like a tool. Slice them, open them up like a hole. Keep your commandments. Just wait on the day of the Lord. Messiah come back with a sword. Dragging the meat is around like a tool. Slice them, open them up like a hole. Keep the commandments right at the door. Every election. So now, because they can't beat me, they got to do this smear campaign to convince public opinion that I'm bad for them. So you say two elections. You were first elected in 2021? No, 2013 was my first election for trustee. I was a trustee. trustee. I sat where they are. Right. That's uh, why uh, I know the law. Council. Yes. Elected mayor 2021. Yes. Term is four years? Yes. Okay. Uh, plans of running for re-election? I'm running for both my seats. And yeah. I'm going to win them. So, and when is the election for Thornton Town? 2025. So those elections at the same time? They are. Bullshit. Oh, bullshit. Oh, bullshit. Oh, bullshit. Why are you detaining me? You about to lose your job. You about to lose your job. Get this dance. You about to lose your job because you are detaining me for nothing. You about to lose your job. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access. Let's go.